ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يسالونك عن الشهر الحرام قتال فيه قل قتال فيه كبير وصد عن سبيل الله وكفر به عند الله والفتنة أكبر من As I said today we will be talking about how to deal and how to understand on how we can deal with the media. And there, there's many reasons this is important. But one of the major reasons is that we don't want a situation where our internal conversations amongst ourselves is one thing. And what we're saying to the media is different. Many times we are in a complex because we know when we talk heart to heart there are certain things that are understood amongst Muslims and so it's easy to say that. But if we were to say, if ask the same questions or if the same discussion was to happen in front of the media, our way of responding would be somewhat different. So we have to understand is this right, is it not right, what are the principles, what are the guidelines and so that we know how to approach the issue of the media. And that when things like the photograph of uh, the death of Osama bin Laden take place, uh, when these things take place, how do we understand this? How much credibility do we give to this from an Islamic perspective? And this is very important because one of the problems of and what not to trust. Fitna is a state of anarchy. The information that is coming to you, it may be true. There were supposed to be weapons of mass destruction, as you know, in Iraq. It could be true, it could not be true. We don't know, there's no way to verify. So how do we deal with this whole situation? So for this, there are actually two things the Quran deals with, actually three things. Number one is the authenticity of the source. But the problem is, when we deal with the authenticity of the source, if we start discussing the authenticity of the source, this is too heavy of a topic to discuss in the media. Because in the media, they give you 30 seconds, I don't know, I've been interviewed by these TV people, they give you 30 seconds to say, you have to give a punchline. When you deal with the media, you have to give a punchline. You can't have intellectual discussions. If you want to have an intellectual discussion, you need time. You need two, three hours to discuss. Because the, situ the fifth night we, we are in is so, so complicated that there's no way that you can make uh, something beyond a punchline. So one issue is the authenticity of the source. The second is the constructed reality in the mind of the public. The constructed reality in the mind of the public. This is two, this can be two different things, as you know. The constructed reality in the mind of the public may be something very different from what is really, what is what is really true. The, I know today I'm not talking about the uh, previous, but I thought because of these recent events, this would be an important to topic to touch upon at least to some degree. And you will see how amazingly the Quran has touched upon this topic from different directions. And then some of the sourcing issues we will also discuss. But these are the two major things. That one is the source. And the other is the reality and the perceptions that are already existing in the minds of the people. 
Okay, so these are the two, two, and the third, the third is actually a form of action that we have to take place, which I will discuss towards the end. Now, I want to discuss ayahs number 216 to 219 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where this issue is discussed. Now in ayah number 218, it is referring to an event that took place in the time of the Prophet, in which he found himself in the same situation. Because the Prophet, many, many times, the Prophet had to deal with the issue of propaganda. He was always dealing with the issue of propaganda. So, there are some gems that we can understand. And particularly, propaganda when the propaganda machine is right. I mean, if some Muslims are being blamed for something that they did wrong, right? Which is the reality of the perception of the people. Then how did the Qur'an deal with this? So the one instance, for example, is uh, Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu, or some companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. the Prophet was in Medina, he told them that here in this letter, he gave them a note, said don't open this letter for three days. When you have gone towards Mecca, three days of travel, then open the letter, see what it says, and then take the proper action. Okay, But the Prophet told them, don't kill anyone. They went three days into, into the mission, and they opened the letter, and the letter said, spy on what is, take intelligence on what is happening in Mecca. They went near a place to Mecca, Somehow, one of the brothers that was with this Sahabi, who was also a Muslim, he got into a quarrel, and he got into a fight, and now this was during the sacred months. In these sacred months, where anyone can raise, you can imagine the propaganda that you killed a Qurayshi in the sacred months, in one of the sacred months. So this is a very big problem. So one of the companions killed somebody and brought two people as hostages. Completely a very, very negative, a very bad, a very horrible situation to be in. Now the Prophet had to deal with this. So, regarding this, so after we study this ayah, 218, you will see how the ayah before and after relate to the same subject. Yes, alunak anish shahar al haram. They're asking you, what happened? The sacred month means nothing to you? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Qitalun fi Killing in there Qul Now O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Respond to them Qitalun fihi kabir So this is one statement Fighting in So this is the punchline Right? This is the 30 second Response That yes That event that happened Where Muslims killed someone And took them as hostages Is very This is kabir Shayun Kabir. Yeah, very unacceptable. Something unacceptable. But then, from there, after the punchline, what happens? Then now the further discussion continues. So, yes, alunak ani shahr al haram kitalun fihi kul kitalun fihi kabir. But the contrast. But also this. This is big. But this is also what? وَصَدٌ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَصَدٌ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَحْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرٌ When you, you're talking about killing in the sacred months, but what about expelling the people from the sacred house? This is nothing to you. This is what you did. What you did here, this is nothing to you? You're talking about, they're asking me about the sacred months. Allah says, say it's a very wrong thing. But, but to kick people out of their houses, and particularly the sanctuary of Mecca itself, that was okay to you. You see what Allah is doing here? So, يَسْأَلُونَكْ عَنِ الشَّحْرِ الْحَرَامِ كِتَابٌ فِيهِ قُلْ كِتَابٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ وَصَدٌ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَمَسْرِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَحْلِي مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ 
This is what? Bigger than, this is bigger in front of Allah than the killing in the sacred months. Because the sacred months are dependent upon Makkah itself. Right? And why did Uthman radiallahu anh, for example, not fight back? It was because of, because of the sanctuary of Makkah and so on and so forth. So, مِنْهُ أَكْبَرْ إِنْدَ اللَّهُ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَطْرِ Here, the word qatl translated not as killing murder. Murder. Fitna, chaos, corruption, anarchy in society. Creating anarchy in society. When you go take over a society, when you go take over Iraq, when you go take over Afghanistan, or you take over any country, if you are creating a state of anarchy, then sins will be committed. Because when you create a state of anarchy, then there's no order, right? What happened in New Orleans when the hurricane hit? There's anarchy. Right? So if you create anarchy in any situation, China, Indonesia, America, when there's a state of anarchy, there will be wrong that will be done amongst humanity. Anarchy is, this is very, this is very important from a political science perspective. A state of anarchy is the worst thing you can do because you open the doors for all sorts of wrongs. Every type of wrong. Robbery, go, they, it, when the New Orleans thing happened, you know, Walmart and all these stores, they were looted completely. So this state of anarchy that they were trying to create, but the Prophet created order out of that situation. They were trying to expel them and just create anarchy. And this state of anarchy that was being created, it could have led, if the Prophet wasn't there, it could have led to a lot of other problematic situations. So, وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَطْرِ Fitna, chaos, corruption, anarchy is worse than murder. Because anarchy leads to mass murders, not just a murder. وَلَا يَزَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ حَتَّى يُرُدُّكُمْ عَنْ دِينِكُمْ إِنِ اسْتَتَعُوا They will never stop fighting with you until they turn you back. And we should also be very clear about this. It seems to us that you're not going to stop pursuing us until we change your ideology. Because in the end of the day, at the time of the world right now, it's an ideological war. It is first and foremost, before anything else, it is what? A war of ideological thought. And so let's be clear about this. It's not just about what happened, but it's also about the differences in ideology. And you can't tolerate, you can't tolerate someone have an ideology that doesn't fit yours. This is, the, I'm just giving you the reference to the ayahs. Then I'm going to tell you how this all ties in. فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَبِتَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَ Allah says these are the people whose actions have been completely wasted in this life and the next life. أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ They are the people of the fire whom فِيَا خَالِدُونَ In it they will remain. Why are they creating this propaganda? To convince your people. Oh, Muhammad and his people. So they, 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 they're so bad. They're killing our own Qurayshi brothers in the sacred month. Can you believe this? Can you believe, who will be affected by this propaganda? The Muslims are, the, are also amongst those that get affected by this propaganda. So Allah is responding that to, to, this is why it had to come in the Quran as a response. That you're talking about somebody who killed somebody in the, in, in the holy month, but you killed, kicked a whole group of people out uh, of the sanctuary of Makkah itself. And what is the real cause of this? The real cause of this is an ideological dispute. Okay, now, this is the ayah that dealt with this particular issue. But now how Allah completes this issue by the ayah before it and by the ayah after. And you'll see how Qur'an is interrelated. It's so powerful. Okay, so, then Allah says in the next ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Indeed, those people who believe and did hijrah and they struggled in the cause of Allah, they are the ones who seek the mercy of Allah. Allah is forgiving and merciful. 
Now, the next ayah. <coughs> now tell me, what does khamar, alcohol, have to do with this issue that's mentioned before? The ayah previously was talking about a political issue. And now it's talking about khamar. How are the two related? Because the ruling of both is the same. So Allah says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ Khamar, alcohol and uh, intoxications and all of this. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ There is great, what? Sin in it. But there's also some benefit. The same thing. There is something right about what you're saying, but the overall picture is wrong. Just as in alcohol, there is, the majority of it is wrong, bad for you, right? But there's some benefit. You have some truth, okay, there's some point you can drink alcohol for that benefit, but it's evil outweighs the good in it. The right that you have, to, you are saying in your media, that you're propagating through your media, it has some right claims in it. But that right claim that you have is not greater than the evil of, of it that's being hidden. So Allah says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعٌ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا And the evil of it is greater than the benefit of it. This is the rule of the Muslims. How do we deal with the situation? First of all, we're truthful. If something is wrong, we say it is wrong. But when you know you're dealing with the media, you deal with it in a certain way. Yes, murder is wrong. Murdering anybody innocent is wrong. It's wrong. But you have to know, so, so we will, so, and the ruling is what? We look at what is the great, where the greater, what? Evil is. And where the lesser evil is. In other words, like in the case of alcohol, or like in the case of fitna versus qital, or khamar within itself. The ifmuhuma akbar min naf'ihima, the, the sin of it is greater than the benefit of it. وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ كُلِ الْأَفْوَى كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ يَتَتَفَكَّرُونَ And they ask you what we should spend. Just say whatever is left, surplus, you spend it. And that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes His ayat clear for the people that reflect. Now this is the main ayah. Then the ayah under it is about alcohol. Same ruling. Ruling that is here is the same ruling that is here. This is ruling. This is ruling about a particular object, khamar, wal mason, and this ruling is a political issue. Now, before that, the ayah number now we read the long ayah that we read about the political issue is ayah number seventeen. Now we're going to ayah two uh, two two seventeen. Now we're doing ayah number two sixteen. Kutiba alaykum al qital. So because. Now Allah is ref before Allah is talking about yes qitalun fihi kabir there are times where killing is wrong definitely that's the case but the ruling as far as qital is concerned kutiba alaykum al qital fighting has been ordained for you it's your fault by the way the word kutiba is very important here in the sharia wherever the word kutiba comes it always comes with conditions. For example, kutiba alaykum as Like kutiba is one of the ways to know ifart. There are different words and they have different, uh, you can say aspects to it. But wherever the word kutiba is written, it means it comes with conditions. Okay? And particularly regarding timing. Particularly regarding timing. So kutiba alaykum al-kital. In the same way it says, inna salata kana ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawtuta. So the salah is ordained for the people at a written time. Okay. So kutiba alaykum al-kital. Kital has been ordained for you. Now there's some people they like fighting. Some people who don't like fighting. Some. So Allah is explaining again the the karahia versus the 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 liking versus. And this fighting for you is what? It has karah, you dislike it, you don't want to fight. Really, if you are talking about war, war, you don't want war. Yes, And over here we should translate kital as war. Kital has been ordained for you. And it is disliked for you. You don't like this. 
Maybe you dislike something. And it is what? Good for you. And maybe you love something and it is bad for you. And Allah knows and you don't know. Again, the same situation. Here is something that you don't like, but Allah is saying, but maybe something that you don't like, but it is good for you. Over there in alcohol, same situation. You like alcohol, but it's evil is more than... So something there was stopped. In the, in the case of qital, something was ordained. Even though you don't like it, but Allah is telling you to do it. In the case of alcohol, you like it, Allah is telling you to stop. And in the middle is this ayah about the political situation. And the ruling that was used in the first ayah, and the ruling that is used in the last ayah about the alcohol and the qital. In the middle is this ayah that uses the same principle. What is the, the, the kabir versus the, the bigger issue, the fitna versus the qital. Now, what is it that we learn? So this is just an example from Qur'an. Some of, one of the rulings that we get from the Qur'an regarding understanding the political situation be, uh, around us, which is that what? There can be some truth to what is being said. But always we have to be concerned with what is the bigger picture. And what is the bigger picture? The bigger picture will always be an ideological picture. The bigger picture will always be based upon an ideological uh, point. So, now I said there were two aspects. One is the authenticity of the source, and the other is the reality in the minds of the people. Now, once a once a propaganda machine has started, now there's no way to deconstruct what they have at that moment. There's no way to what? Deconstruct what they have at that moment. For example, the 9-11 uh, or the finding of Osama. Now, for example, let's just take, uh, from an Islamic perspective, the picture of Osama bin Laden does not act as a credible source by any means uh, because we need in Islam at least, what, two Un, uh, objective parties, two objective people, who will verify that this is uh, his body. And of course, if you're then going to throw it into the ocean, then no one can verify it ever after that. So this becomes very problematic. And particularly, I'm not saying if it happened or didn't happen. That's not the issue. The issue is sourcing. Every journalist talks about this. The issue is how, do we, how can we verify that this is what? Verifiable information. Just because somebody important came on TV and said this happened. And, but we need in Islam, we don't accept anything. We don't even accept, for the most people who, who, who go with the eyewitnessing and so on and so forth, they don't even accept the Ramadan or any month for that matter until they've what? Witnessed them. When we can't do anything as Muslims till there are witnesses. So what do we do? We understand that this for us, is just a question mark. We don't have to have an answer. We don't have to have this definitely happened, or did not happen, or probably happened, or probably didn't happen. From our perspective of sourcing, it doesn't matter. It's just information. It's just information. For example, Saddam Hussein, the whole execution was uh, documented and recorded and verified by so many people and people even recorded on their cell phones and so on and so forth. The execution of Saddam Hussein was there for everyone to see. But the Osama bin Laden case is a little bit different. Uh, they, could have, they could have, if they wanted to, shown the dead body in live TV rather than some picture which is very questionable. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying if it was true or not true. I'm not interested in that question even. I'm just saying that as Muslims, we have a tradition of sourcing. Going all the way back to the issue of asnat, right? Even like for example, in the, in the tradition of hadith, even three asnads going back is considered hadith ahad. It's considered a weak hadith. It's not even considered... A, three, three, three sources going back to the same wordings of the Prophet from three different cities. Someone is saying the Prophet said this in Mecca. Somebody is saying the exact same words from Baghdad. And somebody is saying the exact same words from Egypt. will say this hadith is weak because it has only three riwayas. The only time where it becomes more than mutawatir and it's five or more. Five different cities with... Five, you know, then, then it becomes uh, mutawatir. But three is not considered even authentic. We are a people 
of sourcing. We are a people of asnad. We are a people who, who, to us, the authenticity of the source of information is more important than the information even. The source of information for us is more important than the information itself. Where is the source coming from? What is the reliability of this source? And if uh, the government, if we put the, the challenge of ha the criteria of hadith, for example, on, on the, uh, the American foreign policy and, and its makers, for example, saying they're weapons of mass destruction and there was, they knew about Pearl and so on, so, so on and so forth, uh, America wouldn't even stand the credibility of, of being acceptable as a, as a ravi of a hadith, for example. Okay, meaning any, any, any statement by them would be questionable. But like I said, this is, this is an academic discussion. This is what? This is not a discussion you can have within, what? 30 seconds. This is not a discussion that you can put on TV and try to explain to them because the minute you do that, you're not going to have enough time to explain. To explain it, you need to go to the academic settings, you need to go to the churches, you need an hour, two hours to explain your point of view because there's so much jahiliya in the minds of the people that it just takes a lot of time to un untie every, 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 mis every wrong point. It takes a long time to do that. So when you deal with the media, you need a punchline. And the way you deal with the punchline is you deal with the constructed reality that is in the minds of the people already there. Okay? So regarding this, everybody knows this ayah, but just for the sake of being thorough, I want to mention this ayah in Hujrat uh, also. So, uh, So as you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu, O you people who believe in ja'akum fasiqun, if a fasiq, a wrongdoer, comes to you. Now, when the news comes to you, you don't know what's a fasiq. And that is the point. You don't know the person who's giving, and this is very important because how will someone be able to hurt the Muslim community by get, getting Muslims to act upon other Muslims, and that source will be what Allah is calling fasiqun. Okay, ya yuhal ladin amanu in jaakum fasiqun bi nabain fatabayyan. This is Surah Al-Hujurat, ayah number six. Bi nabain fatabayyanu an tusiba qawman bi jahalatin fatusbiu ala ma faantum nadimin. This can also refer to the war between Ali and Muawiyah and so many other situations that have happened in the Islamic history. But today it's referring to the media in general that the most important thing for us is the sourcing. Okay? And so that is referring to that. Now as far as the reality that is in constructed in the minds of the people. So for that we have two different things before us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah where they say يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّحْرِ الْحَرَامِ كِتَالٌ فِيهِ قُلْ فِي كِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ قُلْ كِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ This is, and there's a stop on this by some of the ruayas of Qira. This is where the stop occurs. It's, a, it's like, you can consider like a punchline. Okay, so the reason I'm saying this is that when you are now dealing with people, when you're what? So we don't need to go into, well, we don't think this really happened or did not happen, it's too difficult of a situation. All you have to do is question the what? The source. That's easy to do. Well, we wish we had more sources to verify what happened. Then no one can argue against that. But if you start saying something like, well, I don't believe this is true because of these, these, these reasons, it's very what? Very difficult. If 9-11 happened, what are, the, what, what are the sources that tell us what? This is what we're concerned with. We're concerned with what? The sources. And always in the media, what we want to do is when we're talking about people's realities, we want to just deal with that issue. They ask you if murder in the holy months, they ask you about that, say it is a what? How, look how the ayah first gives you the punchline. Because if you notice about the ayah, just notice this about the ayah. Allah says, Kitalun fihi kabir. Now, if you just leave it as one portion, Kitalun fihi 
Kabir. It's a very, the murder in it is very bad. And then Allah goes on to explain the total context. After saying what? Murder in it is very bad. And so, يَسْأَلُونَكْ عَنِ الشَّحْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٌ فِي قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِي كَبِيرٌ Then, وَصَدٌّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَمَسْلِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِي مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ أَكْبَرُ إِنْ دَ اللَّهِ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ الْقَتْلِ So on and so forth. That explanation is the lengthy one. But what the person wants to hear immediately, what the public that feels that they have been wronged, think of like Quraysh, listening to Quran. Right? Think of Quraysh listening to Quran after this murder has taken place. Right? A Muslim killed a non-Muslim. And so, the first thing he will hear, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّحْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ They ask you, they're asking you, the public is asking you, O oh Muhammad, what about killing in the, month, in the holy months? So the first thing Allah tells them, what they want to hear. First Allah tells them what? What they need to hear psychologically based upon their constructed reality. So Allah says from the very beginning, Look, qitalun fihi kabir. Yes, we admit that fighting or murder in the holy months is a very wrong thing. This is what they needed to hear. The further explanation is what we would like to teach them. The further explanation is what? Is, you know, this uh, wa doesn't just mean and. This can be considered wa tafsiri. Wa tafsiri means that this statement, wa qitalun fihi kabir, first point, point number one, right? Then the wa after that is, is like an explanation in contrast to this first statement. So, so, wa sadun an sabilillahi wa kufrun bihi wa masjid al harami wa ikhraju ahli minhu akbaru in the law. This is the second point. Wa al fitratu akbaru min al qatal. Third point, and that they will not stop working against you until you go back to their ideology. So how many points? Four points are mentioned in this ayah. But the first point, qitalun fihi kabir, is the, is the psychological need that the people had to over there to hear. Right? So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, and in the same way, we have to operate. The first thing, the first point that we need to get across is their psychological need. When we're talking on TV, for example. Yes, and in very general terms. Not that Abdullah such and such did this or such and such. No, murder, is, murder in the sacred months is very bad. Killing, killing innocent people. Because we don't know if this person did it or not. So we can only respond in what? In, in general terms. Killing innocent people without uh, any cause is very wrong. Very, very wrong. And... So, nor did the Muslims after 9-11, for example, nor were we able to appease the minds of the public with the punchline. We weren't able to do that. Nor were we able to give the bigger picture discussion within the academics and the churches on trying to, being able to discuss the whole matter in, in full detail and, and understanding the whole situation. And what... Now notice that is particularly a very easy method that Allah uses here is Allah does compare and contrast. You're saying we did something bad, but look at what you did. Right? And this is a point that, you know, for example, they were talking on TV about celebrating after 9-11, right? Which Muslims, by the way, did not do. That was a misinformation. Uh, but, uh, but they were talking about Muslims celebrating after 9-11, but yet they have done it themselves. They were celebrating the death of a human being, and regardless of if it was Hitler or Osama bin Laden, or regardless of if it was uh, how bad of a person he was, but he is, after all, a human being needs to be respected and given the final rights which generally are given to human beings. So, uh, and 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 you know, uh, so what is it that I'm saying? So, and the th and the next thing that becomes very important, which the Quran was able to accomplish which we have not even come close to, is this exact, this is the, so the first point was authenticity of the source, the second point was the reality in the minds of the people, the third point is the, is the idea of bayin, tabayin, tabayin, make clear, make clear, make clear. Quran spent a lot of time making issues clear, making the issues clear. And the way we do that, the way Quran did that, is by giving Every, by, by learning the ayahs, by learning the 
ayahs, every Muslim was taught the punchline. By learning the ayahs, every Muslim was taught the punchline. And there was this mechanism through the Qur'an where the whole Muslim community knew if they're going to ask you this, this is the, this is the response. So we haven't done this and said what happens with our kids especially is they listen to the TV and that's their only source. We as a Muslim community need to, when we have these events, we need to not only be able to engage the media, because the, the number one people as far as we are concerned that are being affected by this are the Muslims themselves. And the Qur'an was very aware of this. And, and like I'll give you one more example, this is a very well known example. When the whole issue of the Qibla changed, when the Qibla changed from Aqsa to Mecca, it was a very big propaganda machine for them. And the Qur'an spent several ayahs making this clear again and again and again and again and again. And the people that were being affected by this propaganda at that time were the Muslims. Because when the Prophet changed the Qibla, some of the Muslims changed the Qibla with the Prophet and others did not. And so we need our own propaganda response as the Qur'an was acting as that. We need that, but not only to engage ABC and NBC and Fox News and all of these people, but we need that to give the proper response even to our Muslim brothers and sisters. So when they're out there discussing the issue with anyone, they have the most effective response. Because a lot of times we will fall into a discussion and if we're trying to come up, we you know, either start sympathizing with them, but we don't have a punchline answer. Whereas they're giving you the punchline quotes that they're hearing from TV. And you don't have a punchline response. So it's very important that Muslims learn to, get, ha, learn to uh, bring about this uh, punchline response. Uh, you can say the 30 second response. And yeah, I was very annoyed by the way. This, this happened to me uh, while I was in uh, Washington DC. Uh, MSNBC wanted to interview me and I was thinking of long things to say. I thought they'll give me some good time, you know, but they give you 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. So I'd spent the whole day excited that, you know, I'm going to respond and at the end the guy goes, yeah, you got 30 seconds, you know, to, to give your... 30 seconds? I can't even, like, say my first point in 30 seconds. I mean, give me a fair chance to have a... I mean, because the issues are so complicated that in 30 seconds you can't say anything. Um, and so we need... But the thing is, that's, that's not their problem. That's our problem. And we need to come up with these 30 second responses to all of these issues. And so, what is the constructed reality as far as the public is concerned? You know, Osama bin Laden died, well, let's have closure, let's move on, let's build bridges now, let's have, you know, we Muslim community, we want to have a good communication, a good build, bridge building, interfaith dialogue, so embrace us now for that, now you should, because, I mean, this is the constructed reality of the people, especially when some violence or something wrong has been done, I'll give you an example. People will sit in courtrooms for hours, hearing the uh, excruciating, painful details about one of their loved ones, how they were victimized, just to hear a, uh, a guilty verdict, right? They'll sit in the courtrooms for hours and hours and hours just to get that feeling that the guilty verdict was given. As far as the general public is concerned, who are not, in, who are not aware of the, the bigger picture, as, as many times Muslims are. They're like those people that are sitting in the courtroom just anxious to hear what? The guilty verdict. And what that does is that, um, so, so this situation, whether it is true or not, psychologically will definitely work, I hope, for our benefit, where people inshallah ta'ala in America can finally get a sense of closure the situation is closed and this is the time where, where Muslims can reach out and say that you know we hope you got the closure that you were looking for we hope that rage uh, has, has, has lightened and that we hope that you can now begin to engage the Muslim community in, in, in interfaith dialogues and just dialogues about things in general and this is the, now the time where we would like the American community to engage with us because we also feel relieved that this issue is now put behind us and we now feel that there are bigger issues that we can finally deal with rather than something that was so emotionally painful for both the Muslims as well as the non-Muslims that was a very painful issue so now we can now engage the community in that so 
But then again, so there's, there's the punchline attitude that you have to have when you're with the media, and then when you're in the academic circles, then that's where you can really open up, talk about sourcing, talk about the details. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does by saying, قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ It tells them what they need to hear first. Even though this is not the whole picture. Then the whole picture begins after that. Then the second thing Allah does, look how it goes. First is the punchline. Second is compare and contrast. You, but you also did the same thing, right? You don't want to start by saying, oh, fitna is akbar min al-qatr. Right? They won't even understand that. First Allah says, qitalun fihi kabir. Okay, you can swallow that. Okay, second, swallow this. What you did to us, what we did to you is not more than what you did to us. Okay, you can swallow that. Okay, now the third thing is, qitalun fihi, al-fitnatu akbaru min al-qatr. This is the third thing. And finally, come on, let's admit it. Let's not be politically correct here and politically nice here, pretending, you know, uh, let's just understand that yes, we do have different ideological point of views. We have, this is an ideological war, and it really comes down to, to that. Okay, so, uh, so this is one thing that uh, I wanted to mention. How much time do I have? 15 minutes. Hmm. Okay, so, in the case of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now notice, I will go back to Mecca. When they were saying the Prophet is Majnoon, he's Kadhab, he's Sahir, who was responding to who? Who was responding to who? The Prophet was reciting Quran, and as a response to that Quran, they were saying, You're Majnoon. So who's reacting to who? You have to remember, this is something very important, that Muslims in Mecca and Medina from the Quranic perspective, when you look at the Quran, Muslims were obsessed. Muslims were obsessed with propaga propa pro doing, propagating their ideas. To the point that they became compelled to respond to the Prophet. They became what? Compelled to respond to the Prophet that they had to have a shura and discuss, okay, finally, what is this Quran? Is it shi'r? Is it shi'r? Is it, is it poetry? Is, is what? Is what? They finally, the elite had to do this. So they were reacting to the Prophet. They were what? Reacting to the Prophet. Today, our problem is we are reacting to, to them. The issue is that before these events come, we know that there will be hundreds of these events. Hundreds of these events that are questionable. Not today only, but tomorrow and the day after and the day after. There will be hundreds of these events that are questionable from so many point of views. But our job is from the day one, we are clarifying our stance. We're clarifying our position. And this is now what I'm about to say is even more important than the first part. That what does it mean? How do we engage the media? What are we engaging the media with? What was the Quran engaging everyone with? Now listen to this. We generally, when we look at the Makki Surahs, we generally think that the Makki Surah was talking about Tawheed. We generally have this feeling that the Makki Quran is talking mostly about Tawheed. It is incorrect. Because they already believed in Allah. The thing that they didn't believe in is the Day of Judgment. If you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they'll say Allah. They knew Allah. But the issue that Islam was obsessed with is to tie the immoral actions, this, listen to what I'm saying, tying their immoral actions to the Day of Judgment. This is what the Makki Qur'an was doing. And it is from that morality that the law is derived in Medina later on. For example, let me give you some examples. For example, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Destruction is for those people who cheat in their business. 
الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون. Right? When they, when they weigh and they uh, weigh the scales and they, they, they are deficient and when they want to take their taking full balance, right? Do they not think they'll be raised? For that great day. So you have a moral issue tied with the day of judgment. Do they, did you see the one who denies the day of judgment? He's the one who pushes away the orphan. And all the moral issues after that. So, Quran throughout, قتلت, For what reason do you kill this child girl? وطب, criticizing Abu Lahab. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, that, that they go into the cities and they raid them at night. When the Quran talks about that. When, so Quran is talking at the social level, at the economic level, at the, at the, genocide, of the, in, uh, the, the genocide of the infants. And so Quran is making itself clear by... Before any of these events are taking place, Qur'an has its own political, social, cultural critique and commentary about what is happening in, Medi- in, in Mecca itself. Many places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sometimes pointing fingers on an individual, sometimes He's pointing fingers at some of their actions, and uh, to, like whether it is criticizing their behavior towards the uh, orphans and uh, you know for example these are talking about certain people in that society and so it's not just that we that they were react they were reacting to the prophet because the prophet had made a political critique of their or, political, cultural critique of their situation. And they were forced to respond because of that. And so in the same way, we have to even... See, the problem is, if they're going to do something to us and we're going to respond, that's not very effective. We need to be out there exposing, showing, educating the, the ills of society. And saying that Islam stands for this. Sumayya radiallahu anha, how did she accept Islam? She accepted Islam because when she heard the ayahs, uh, because every single girl in Mecca had the chance, or the, the chance that she would have, that was alive, every single girl had the chance that she would be, she would have been killed when she was a child. Sumayya radiallahu anha remembered, oh, when my father, you know, he, he did it to my, the daughters that were born before, he couldn't do it to me. And when she heard these ayahs, she became Muslim. For what reason do you kill this child girl? And you know, in the Arabic language, it's very powerful because Allah is not asking the criminal, what reason did you do this sin? Allah is asking the victim, for what sin was, you, was this done to you? It's, it's it, like the, 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 the grammatical and the, uh, the illusion there from an Arabic perspective is very powerful. But anyway... The point is, is that what social critique have we done? If we don't, because the strength of Islam is a moral strength. The strength of Islam is a moral strength. If the people don't know what are the issues Muslims stand for. And the only time we're responding is when something negative happens. Then it's not going to work. People have to know. Rather than saying, you know, like putting a, a, a full page ad saying, you know, Muslims are peaceful people, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's very effective. It should be more like, Muslims stand against taking alcohol, drugs, so on and so forth. That, that we need to put an image in the minds of the people. What are the issues these Muslims, they stand for? What are the, what are the moral issues that these Muslims, they stand for? What they belong to? And so, when people in different parts of the country. For example, if they knew this one thing, Muslims stand against alcohol. That lady whose child died because he was drunk and driving. And she hears, oh, Muslims, they, they don't take alcohol. Muslims are against alcohol. Muslim children grow up never drinking alcohol, which is partly true. But if she understands, these are the values and the morals we want to promote. And her son died in a, uh, in a car accident. She will sympathize with the Muslims because she knows that Muslims stand for these moral values. Our job, 
our, our critique, our response, become, when Allah says, Qitalun fihi kabir, becomes ten times stronger when the people already understood these are the moral values Muslims stand for. You see what I'm saying? When, Muslim, when the people understand these are the moral values Muslims stand for, and then you're responding to a critique against you, that's powerful. So, it is our job to make things clear, 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 more clear, make things clear, obsessively clear. And so, this is the, some of the points as in, in regards to, and, and this is uh, more than just dealing, how do we deal with news? is just an aspect, is just a small aspect. Because news means how we're reacting to something. News means what? How we're reacting to something that's being said about us or done about us or something that concerns us. And then there is, of course, the, the way to deal with the constructed reality of the people and then the academic discussions. But b before all of that, the groundwork is making sure that people understand these are the moral values Muslims stand for. And only when they understand that. So then you can't hijack Islam. For example, then if TV shows Saddam Hussein praying in this way or that way, it, it, they, will, they will see. Because when we make clear what Islam really stands for, then the hypocrisy that happens on the side of the propaganda becomes more clear. Right? Then it becomes more clear. But if you don't, if you let them hijack, and if you let them put the image in the minds of the people that this is Islam, if you let them do it, then what? Then, then they have hijacked your religion. They're defining your deen, not religion. They're defining your deen for the others. Instead of you defining your deen for others. And so we need to somehow constructively come up with a mechanism within, you could say, the Chicagoland area at least, and then replicate that in other places, where we have a way of just... In the end, you know, it's, it's all of the good things, they emerge, emerge from Tawheed, right? What do I mean by that? If there's Tawheed, all human beings are one. If all human beings are one, then we have to share resources together. We should not be selfish with each other, right? If we're all one, then what? We have to then share, right? For if we have to all share, also if, there's, if all human beings are one, then there's no cultural or there's no chosen people like the Jewish people, we're all the people of God, we're all the chosen people of God, all of us are children of God, right? And then we're also sharing. We don't have to say this is my oil or your oil or whose oil, it doesn't matter. We don't privatize resources in Islam anyway. You cannot privatize natural resources within the Sharia. You cannot privatize oil. Oil belongs to the people, the public. And even to have corporations the way we have in, 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 in some of the cases, like corporations where the corporate is liable but the CEOs are not liable. This is against the idea of mushtar, uh, sharqa, uh, where there is partnership in Islam. If you represent a company, you have to be responsible for what that company does. You go to court, not that com company doesn't go. You know, in America, the company rep represents itself in court. So the whole company can be bankrupt, but the CEOs can still maintain their, uh, their large uh, salaries on the way down. This is not the issue. The issue here is simply that we have to find a way to educate the masses about Islam so that when they hear that Muslims respect their... I'll give you like so many examples, like one example that I'll give to you. Uh, no, it's okay. I don't have time. So uh, when the masses learn, these are the issues Muslims stand for. Then when they hear something from the media, oh, Muslims did this bad, or Muslims did that bad, then they're going to question it. This is not what we learned about Islam. This is not what we learned about Muslims. And particularly if they know good Muslims, you know, there are many times where I've been talking to many non-Muslims. I do hear from time to time, oh, you know, I know that Muslim and I tell him you're not supposed to smoke. Or I know that Muslim and I tell him you're not supposed to take alcohol. So there are people who get educated about Islam and even criticize the Muslims that you're not supposed to be doing this, right? Because they appreciate these morals and values that Muslims have. And so we can't speak for ourselves until we give them an image of some sort of what Muslims stand for, right? And, and uh, part of that is also uh, making sure people understand that Islam is now part of, part of the fabric of our society.
It is not something in Iraq or Afghanistan. You don't need to be concerned about that. You need to be concerned about the 7 million plus Muslims living here. Those are your neighbors. Those are the Muslims you should be reaching out to and talking to and learning about Islam from. And so I'll just end here. Uh, so the, the discussion today was dealing with the news as Muslims. And I think I said some things about that. So when, about the, uh, the, the greater and the lesser, that yes, when we, something goes wrong, we say, yes, this is wrong. When something is wrong, we say, this is wrong. And yes, if 9-11 in the constructed mind of the populace, remember that. If we were the first ones to jump and say, this was wrong, this was wrong, this was very wrong, you shouldn't, shouldn't have been done, no matter who did it, like in the general terms. Whoever did 9-11 is very, very bad for America. If we would have been, rather than feeling victimized, right? If we went there and were the first ones to criticize that, then what would have happened? Then the people would have, then that gave us more credibility. Any event that happens against Muslims, in which Muslims look bad, we must be the first ones to criticize that as far as the general public construction of the mind is concerned. So that they know, because this is a hot issue, there is no such thing as something that's a hot issue and Muslims don't jump on it. Because if we don't jump on it, somebody else is going to mold their minds of what to think. We have to take it out of the, you know, stealing the rug under their legs. We need to do that with these issues. When 9-11 happened, we should have been the first ones to say, 9-11, whoever killed innocent people like this, it is, it is uh, completely bad. It is unacceptable. It is inhumane. And we Muslims will have our own investigation committee that will look into who did 9-11. And we should have had a committee that looked into 9-11 and we should have come out with our own report. But to do that, you need leadership. Same thing with all of these issues that have to do with Muslims and Islam. We should be, if it's negative, if it's, then that gives us, then when we stand up and I'm the first one to stand up and, 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 and talk about how 9-11 was wrong, now that opens the door for me to have the larger discussion, the bigger discussion. Now it gives me the opportunity to do compare and contrast. Right? Now it gives me the opportunity to sit in academic circles and have the bigger discussion, the longer discussion. Now it gives me an opportunity. After they see that if it's wrong, it's wrong. It doesn't matter if it's Muslim or non-Muslim. Killing and murder is very, very wrong. That's what they need to hear. And if we give them what they need to hear when it comes to a moral issue, then that opens the door for us to have bigger and deeper discussions. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات جزاكم الله خير.